letter today uh, that was um, we're going to discuss it was written, written to the Lubavitch Rebbe relates to um, a, a mother in actually in Brooklyn, New York, who's um, um, a bit unhappy that her child has become a little bit too religious. Uh, and not only has he become religious, but horror of horrors, he is now growing a beard. Uh, and she implores, she implores the Lubavitcher Rebbe in view of the fact that it is halakhically permissible to shave with an electric razor, although not with a, uh, not with a uh, cutthroat with a razor, uh, razor that's not electric. Uh, she implores him to um, put the brakes on, on her son and just tell him that, look, halakhically, it's okay, you know, you don't, you don't have to have to grow a beard. Uh, and um, I can tell you that that uh, growing a beard is decision to grow a beard is when you're a young person is not an easy one to take. Um, wasn't easy at the time that I took the decision. It's certainly not easy for my um, was it wasn't easy for my ch our children, and as, as and, and is even more difficult now for our, our grandchildren because the norm is not not to grow a beard so why do you have to do it you know why push you know why just why does a kid have to put himself in this awkward awkward position for what uh, and the rebbe attempts to to respond to this lady and he with great insight he says look I, I want to point out to you something which you know you obviously know your son is in in a very um in a transitional stage from from youth to maturity it's a period of, of adolescence, and adolescence is a very, very difficult stage in a young, in a young person's life. Um, particularly when you're searching for your own identity and when you're living in an environment where there are very few boundaries between Jew and non-Jew, and even amongst Jew themselves between observant and non-observant. And when the whole idea of being an observant religious Jew is something very much of a, a minority at this, at this point of time, it requires a huge amount of courage and conviction to be a strictly observant Jew under these circumstances and also puts a young person under tremendous strain. Uh, even mature adults are prey to influence you know of the of the norms around them and it requires a huge amount of willpower not to succumb. So he says in the light of the above uh, it's the the duty of of every parent in relation to their children at this delicate stage of their child's development um, to do everything that is condu conducive to a young person's peace of mind, uh, to make their struggles easier, to avoid anything which undermines uh, their, their willpower and, uh, and their attempt to, to be different or to forge their own identity. Uh, this is not something that parents need to stand back at this stage of a, of a young person's life. Uh, and he said, and another point is as well, that in the realm of faith, religion, and feeling, every individual is a world unto himself. This is not a realm of reason, where one can argue and convince and change the other person's mind. Young people need to become, uh, need to have an ideal. They need to be attached to an ideal, particularly one which is expressed in particular behavior. You'll see this in the clothes that they choose to wear or in other, other kinds of behavior. And it can be extremely difficult to get such a person to change his feelings and conduct or in any way to change this true nature during this period of adolescence, which is fraught with all kinds of serious implications. And therefore, all of this leads me to the conclusion, I'm not, and he says, I'm not talking halakhically over here, um, that in as much as your son has adopted a particular approach to the question of shaving and has done this despite the fact that this makes him different from many young people of his age, including some of his own friends. And nevertheless, he desires to adhere to this practice. It's clear proof of the importance which he attaches to, to this part of his religious conduct and to his own image. And therefore, trying to discourage him would be like trying to dislodge a brick in the structure in which your, which your son has built up for himself and could therefore bring down the whole of the structure. So in the view of all of the above, I take the liberty, he says, of strongly urging you not to attempt to interfere with your son at this stage, but instead give him the opportunity to conduct himself in this area of religion and feeling without inhibitions. For um, quite the opposite, you should manifest an attitude of understanding and encouragement, safe in the knowledge that um, somebody does carries out um, a, a life of Torah and Mitzvot with faith and, with faith and sincerity, 
it can only bring him God's blessings and all of his needs materially and spiritually. So interestingly, he has challenged this lady, not on the basis of halacha, uh, but on the basis of the fact that young people need to be able to express an ideal uh, and, uh, and sometimes to be different. And this kid is showing his difference in a religious way. Other kids show it in other ways which are slightly more rebellious. Uh, and it's a stage of life where parents need to be very, very careful to give their kids some rope. Um, not, hard, not easy for parents, as we all know, uh, when teenagers behave in ways which go completely contrary to all the things that we think they should be doing. Because after all, every parent would like their children to be just like them, except better. And, <laughs> and, and, when, and when they don't turn out to be like them, it's very disappointing. <laughs> um, but uh, the Rebbe has, I think, has uh, you know has great insight in terms of um, um, needs of of young people, and they need to have an ideal. Actually, that young people need to have an ideal, um, very important, you know, for and one of the things which is pretty much missing in, in our times as well. <laughs>